Hello, just wanted to do a tutorial on some painting tutorials here. I wanted to do um, how to put together this ghost. And I know last year I did a broom and people asked me how I did the bristles. So I thought I would try to do that again. I'll try my best to get that same effect. Um, not sure if I'll be able to do it again, but I will try. And I'm going to take this all apart. This is all assembled. And I'm going to go through and paint it right from start to finish so you can see how um, this is done. And then um, we'll get started. So I'm just going to use um, some different brushes. These are just brushes from Michaels, some cheap ones. And then I'm also going to paint with chalk paint. I am going to try to do some different techniques with some art crayons. Um, this is the black one I always like to use a lot, but I do have a lot of other colors. And I'm going to also use some distressing inks. So I have these. Um, these are just from Michaels. These are the Tim Holtz kinds. And try to add some antiquing to these. So, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this all apart. So there's my bat. And I'm going to set all the pieces that I'm going to paint black. I'm going to set them off to the side. And I have my little pumpkin, a little jack-o'-lantern. I put him over here and I'm not sure what colors I'm going to do the flowers just yet but I'm gonna set them over to the side and then this I'm just going to paint the um, leaves green and then I'm gonna do the berries maybe maybe like a red color because um, this is going to be a fall file so I'm gonna try to stick with some fall colors and for the hat, I think I might do the hat. I don't know if I'm going to do it black or not. Maybe like a really dark purple. And I have a really nice color for that. I'm thinking maybe this um, auber aubergine. I'm going to try that because it's like almost black, but it's like, it's purple. I thought that would look really cool because we're going to do his eyes black. So I think I'm going to try that for the hat this time just to change things up. So I'm going to take that off. There's the little... Um, it's like the little wrap for the broom. I'm gonna set that over here. And the broom just comes apart. This time I made it in two separate pieces so you can um, paint these easier so you don't have to worry about them connecting. So I just made those in separate pieces. I'm gonna take those apart. So then you're going to have this top layer and then this back layer. Um, this is, um, all. this all fits on one sheet all these pieces fit on one sheet um, depending on how you um, position them. So if you use like the 11, what is it like 11 point, I think it's 11.8 by, I think it's 18.8. Um, um, I think it's the exact measurements of uh, one of the sheets that you order. Um, this is just MDF. This whole thing fits on one sheet. So I'm just going to move this out of the way and I'm going to try to um, paint this part black. And all you have to do on this um, sheet here is just the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and get some black paint and I'm going to use this um, folk art chalk paint. And this is just stuff you can get from the craft store. Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, whatever store you prefer. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to paint where his eyes are going to line up. So I just like to grab a little bit here, dip it right in the paint. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint where his eyes are. And that's This is all you have to do. And this does not even have to be good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because all you're going to see is just the eye holes. Okay. It does not have to be perfect. I'm just going to grab a little bit more paint. Okay. And I'm going to grab that ghost and just make sure that I got all the spots. I'll line it up. And looks like I got everything for his eyes. That's all you have to do. So that, that piece is done. You don't have to do anything more with that piece. Okay. I pull these little bits here. I just use paper towel um, so I don't get anything on my table. I'm actually using an antique table to... Um, paint on, which I probably shouldn't. All right, so I'm going to put this brush off to the side. Actually, I'm gonna, before I do that, I'm going to paint my little bat while I still have my black paint out. 
There we go. I always make such a mess all over my hands. Just got all the paint off my hands from yesterday when I was painting and I'll get my hands dirty again. I can never have clean hands after I'm done painting. So I'm all done with that. I already have dirty hands. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe off the black paint. I am gonna come back to that brush because I am going to dry brush with that brush. So I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna put my cap back on that and I'm gonna come back with this aubergine color. Like a really dark, dark, dark purple for the hat. I'm just gonna set this over to the side and do the hat really quick. Here's our hat. Okay. It doesn't matter which brand you use for this. I mean, any chalk paint should do. And you can see this is really, really dark. I'm gonna um, go back and I'm gonna kinda um, antique this up a little bit with um, maybe some black dry brushing just to give it some cool effects, make it look really spooky. So this is a little different than the ghost I did last year. He's a little taller. He's got some different effects, different hat. Um, I changed his arm a little. So he's a little different. And then this guy, he doesn't have his little balloon this year. He's got a, a broom. I thought it'd be something fun. Change it up a little bit. So this paint is a little bit um, thin. Maybe that's why this one was discontinued. So this one's gonna need a, a second coat. So I'm just gonna go through here and just try to work those paint strokes out because I don't like having paint strokes. And I am outside, I'm in my garage, so you might hear some traffic. It's a really nice evening, so I wanted to be outside. We had a beautiful day today and then I was at work all day and it was just the sun was shining, it was gorgeous. And then I got home and the clouds came out, but it's still nice, it's still warm out. So it may rain. It's bringing the mosquitoes out though with all the rain we've been getting. So you may see a mosquito here or there. They like to come out. All right, so I'm just gonna hold. So you don't need to paint this part because that part's gonna be covered up. we're gonna put the floral layer on that part there we go and this is a really 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 dark purple so it's it is like almost black I just thought it'd be kind of cool to give this a little bit of color I don't always like to do everything in black for Halloween all right Here we are. Cool. Let's make sure I get any spots that it's not gonna be covered by the floral. Okay. So I'm gonna come back. I still have my black on this paintbrush. So you can see that. That's our hat. And I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more before I dry brush that. But I'm gonna use this um, brush that I have with the black and I'm gonna just kind of dry brush around the edges just to give it that little spooky effect. So I'm gonna hold on to this and I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit because I did put a, put a few coats on there. And I'm gonna come over here and paint my florals. And I'm going to use this color. I usually use um, the Weeping Willow, but this time I'm gonna try the English Ivy. It's a little darker shade. I do the, um, the Weeping Willow for my spring files. It's a little brighter, but for the fall, I wanna go a little darker green. All right, so I've never used this one before, so I'm just peeling this off. So just starting on my fall files and I wanna really stick with some darker colors. Just grab another brush. I don't like to waste paint, so I like to use 
what's left on the, the part that I peel back because I don't like to ever waste paint. And I'm already making a mess. So I'm just gonna go through and I took a little bit too much paint here, but we'll wipe that off. There we go. So I'm just gonna rub some of that paint off. There we are. Making sure I get all those crevices, make sure there's no paint in the crevices. There we are. And if you don't choose to paint with brushes, you can also use like makeup sponges. That also looks really nice. I just have a lot of brushes, so I just paint with brushes. I just like to do the dry brushing and stuff. So, so all I'm gonna do here is just the greens. And you can do these different shades of green if you want. You can totally do that. I'm just doing them all in one shade. But you can totally do them in different shades. I'm going to have to pick up a little bit more. Because I want to try to go back and get those spots that kind of came off. There we are. So that's all you have to do on this one. And then I'm going to grab another color for those, um, those little berries. And I'm thinking I want to use a pretty, maybe a red. Or, yeah, I think maybe a red thinking um maybe even yellow i'm gonna go with yellow actually because i don't want the red to get lost in that purple hat all right i think i'm gonna go with this and this is the vintage mustard and this is folk art and this the only thing about folk art is it's very thick and you can see how thick that was when i took the cap off so i'm just gonna grab a little bit of that and see how thick that is. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and paint the little berries. And I might even just um, dry brush a little bit of like red along the edges, just to give it a little bit of color. This is one of my favorite colors to use. Especially for fall, I just think it's such a great color. It's kind of a real, it's a good one for like sunflowers. There we are. You just wanna make sure you get any spots that aren't going to be covered by those, those flowers. There's our little berries. So that is done. So I'm just gonna set that over here to dry. And now I think I'm gonna go back. I'm just gonna move this. I'm just gonna set that right back on top. So I don't wanna make a mess. Okay. I'm gonna put my green away. I'm gonna bring my ghost back. my purple away. So here we are. Let me put my used brushes over here. And I think I'm going to use, I'm gonna use the folk art um, chalk paint for this one because I like how thick this one is because I wanna give it some texture this is the same paint I used on the ghost last year. So again, you can see how thick that is when I take the lid off. It's gooey gooey. All right, I'm gonna set this down. And I'm gonna use a bigger brush because I have a bigger surface. So, and you can see I use a lot of this almost all the way down to the bottom. I use a lot of this, this white. Okay, just make sure there's no there's nothing on this, like no cat hair or anything or dust. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and just start. You can see how thick this is. 
It's a very thick paint. And you only need to paint the part that's going to show. Um, you don't need to paint the broom or the hat area. You're just going to paint just those parts. Okay. So here's our white. Oop, I got some of that yellow paint on there and some goobers from my paper towel. So I'm wipe that off. Gonna need a fresh new paper towel soon. Sometimes I use old um, advertisements that come in the mail. Those are great to use. I hate when I get the paint on the inside of the eyes. So what I like to do is just take a clean brush and just get in there and dry that out. Because I don't like to get the paint on the inside. But that's okay because we're going to use the um, art crayon anyways and we're going to outline around the eyes. But I don't like to get all that white paint inside there. It's hard not to, so don't worry if you do. I do it too. So here's his little hand, his little arm, where he's holding his broom. Looks like a little ghost, little ghost witch, or a little, yeah, a little ghost witch. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna be covering this up. And it's going to definitely need another coat. Even with how thick this paint is, you are going to need another coat definitely see all those paint strokes and like MDF just absorbs a lot of just absorbs a lot of uh, paint and if you buy these paints that are these paint brushes at Michaels um be aware that the bristles come out on some of these like the, this kind that you see here um I'm not sure if I would buy these again this particular um batch like with these with the rounded edges these ones just the bristles come out really bad so if you see this kind at Michaels I would just be aware that the bristles fall out so I'm kind of regretting these ones but these other ones these ones are really good so sometimes there are bad batches of brus brushes to get Okay, so you can see some of my bristles are in my paint. I'm just gonna try to get those out. There we are. I don't wanna get any of those bristles in my paint. So definitely going to need more, more paint on this. I'm taking a lot of this paint, I'm trying to get these bristles off. I might just chuck this brush because this is this is no good. I'm gonna switch brushes just just because this one is just losing bristles like crazy. So I'm just gonna switch brushes quick. There we go. And here we are. So we are going to um, do some techniques on this white paint. We're gonna antique it up by doing some dry brushing. So it does not have to be perfect. So just do your best. This is the same way I painted the other one last year. And as you can tell, it did not, it did not come out perfect, but I like it that way. And I like to add some pretty cool effects with the art crayon and some dry brushing. There we are. And I like the texture you get with this chalk paint. That's what I love about it. That's why I go with the chalk paint over the acrylic paint because I like the texture you get. It gives you that cool 
farmhouse style, like like that old, like those old crafts you used to see back in the old days. Okay. Just want to get a little bit more around here because I just don't want any of that MDF to show through. And his hat's going to be covering a lot of part of his face here. His head, or what would be his head if he wasn't a ghost. Ugh, told you I was gonna have mosquitoes out. Hopefully the one doesn't land in my paint. That would be weird. All right. I'm trying to get those brush strokes out, but okay. I think I'm going to let him dry up a little bit and then I'm going to come back and add a little bit more paint afterwards. So I've got some nice good texture there. So I'm going to come back, let him dry for a little bit. I'm still finding brush, those bristles on here. I'm going to just get those bristles off. I'm glad I checked that brush. Okay. I'm still picking these bristles. My goodness. I don't want any of those to dry in my paint. So I'm just moving, getting these off, off camera. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to paint these flowers. Okay, so I'm thinking I definitely want to add some nice, I always like to go with like teals and blues. I love those colors because it gives you like a patina. So I'm going to go with this antebellum blue and that's a really pretty teal color. like a peacock blue. All right, so I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the blue and I'm gonna do just a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of put it on here and this is covering really nice in one coat. I really need to grab some clean paper towels. Just been working out here a lot lately. There we are. So there's our, our blue. And that looks pretty nice in just one coat. So I'm gonna set that over here to dry. And I think I'm gonna do this color. Hmm. I'm trying to decide. Our head is purple. So I might go with, I really want it to pop is we're going to be putting an orange pumpkin on top. So you want to stick with a color that's going to pop on orange. So I think I'm going to do another shade of blue, but maybe just a different shade of blue. I'm going to try this color here. This is called Cascade. And it's like a lighter shade of what I just used. So this is also from Folk Art. And this is, oh, this is gooey. And I'm just going to wipe the paint off 
from the one I just um, used. I'm just gonna move my brush. All right. I don't, I'm gonna clean that brush. I'm just gonna use that same brush again. And this is folk art. And that's a really pretty lighter blue. Now what I wanna do, because we are putting the pumpkin on this flower, I don't want the blue to show through his little eye holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put black in the center of this flower. So that way um, his eye holes look black. So I'm just gonna get, make sure I get my blue on here first. And I'm gonna come back and put the black in the center. So I'm gonna set that to dry for a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna come over here and paint our little jack-o'-lantern. And I have a really pretty orange for that. I'm just gonna put this blue away. I'll have to make sure I recap all my paints as I go so they don't dry out. Okay, so this is a really pretty orange. Um, this one is called Summer Crush, and it's a really pretty orange. It's a great pumpkin orange. Um, it's DIY paint, and um, I just picked this up at our local um, antique store. So, um, and then there's also like a QR code on here um, in case you wanted to find this on your own. But it says DIY paint, it says Debbie's Design Diary. So um, I found this just locally, but I bet you could probably find this online too. But this, this is a great orange, this is my, my go-to orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a small brush and paint my little pumpkin. This little jack-o'-lantern guy. His little teeth. There he is. Just wanna make sure I get all of those spots. Make sure I get those little teeth. It's a fun little guy. Look at his little chin. And I'll paint this up close so you can see him a little better. So there's our little jack-o'-lantern. And I really like, really like this color for our jack-o'-lantern. So that's gonna go in the center of the flower arrangement. People are out with their fun cars right now. It's a nice night, so apologize for the loud vehicles going by. It's a pretty quiet street I live on, but occasionally get some loud cars. Okay. Alrighty, so there's our little guy, our little pumpkin. And he's pretty cute. There he is. Okay, so I'm gonna let him dry. And I really like this orange, and I use this orange to dry brush the edges just to give it some fun flair. <sighs> Got a little bit of <sighs> stuff on here. And I'm gonna try to add a little bit of, I like to add a little bit of um, dry brushing. I use a little bit of the yellow 
that was left over from the berries. Just to add something different. I always like to dry brush the edges a little bit because it gives like a nice little patina effect. So that's that yellow. And then I'm gonna just kind of take some of this orange off of this brush so I don't have like a crazy amount of orange. And I'm just gonna, maybe I took too much off. Come back and get a little bit more. And I'm just gonna get those edges, a little bit of orange on it. Not too much, cause you don't wanna compete with that little pumpkin that's gonna go on top. I really like that yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that yellow. I kept my yellow out. I really like that yellow. That yellow was really nice. So I'm just gonna dry brush those edges. And we are gonna come back and paint that center black. Okay. I'm gonna add, add a little bit more of that yellow. Take some of that off. And I'm gonna dry brush these edges with the yellow. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like this one I added a little much, so I just wipe it off with my fingers. Again, if you get too much, just wipe it off. Get a little bit more. I just like how the yellow and the and the blue look together. I just feel like it gives a really cool patina. All right, this is really dry brush and nice. I'm gonna add some of that orange. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use that same brush and just add a tad of that orange. And you really can do this however you want. You don't have to put the orange in if you don't want to. I just like how it looks. There's a little bit of that orange in there. Okay, so that one is, I'm gonna move it up so you can see it better. So there's our blue flower. And this one's gonna go over the top, just like that. And I actually might even put a little bit of red just to make it pop even more. So I have this really pretty, like burgundy color. I really wanna stick with those fall colors. And I'm gonna keep using that same brush Actually, this was this brush. And I'm gonna dip that right in that red. I don't wanna get I don't wanna get too much red paint because you don't wanna overwhelm it. And just ever so lightly and a little little bit. And that'll make it really pop. And you can do it how, how much you want because then you'll, you'll really see it when you bring it up to it and you'll see that, that red. And now you can see it pops much more when I have those red edges. Okay, I like that. So I'm gonna go back and this is pretty dry and I still have my black out and I still have my brush that I use for black. And I'm gonna add a touch of black I just grabbed it from the cap. And I'm just gonna go right in the very center with that. I don't wanna put too much black on there. So I'm just gonna just do the very center where that pumpkin is going to show. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be where the pumpkin's going to show through. I'm gonna move this. And so you're gonna see where that pumpkin 
I want to make sure you get all that area. And it looks like, looks like we got it. So you're going to see that black in the middle. That really pops. And then you can really see that orange outline really well. There's our flower. There we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I might even put a little bit of the art crayons around the edges of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna come back, grab my art crayon. And what I'll do is I'm just going to take the edge and just outline around the edge ever so slightly, just so you can see those edges even better. So you just put a little bit of the black and you're gonna go around the edges. So that those really pop. There we go. So there's our pumpkin. We'll go back and put them on there. You can really see those edges. I'll bring it up close so you can see it. And you can see his the edges of the pumpkin showing. And it's like outlined in black. Okay, so I'm gonna set that over to the side. And we are gonna come back to our pumpkin, or not pumpkin, our ghost. And he is going to need another coat of white. Let's take a look definitely going to need another coat if you can see that so I'm just gonna move all my paints set this down so I don't get any paint on the back there we are and I'm done now that I'm done with my orange I'm gonna put the cap on that put it to the side and I'm gonna grab some more white paint and then I'm gonna let this dry so I'm gonna just give it another coat. Now that this has been drying. And there's a lot of great texture on this. I'm loving the texture. Grab some more white. And give his little arm some texture. There we go. What's nice about these messy brushes, like these ones that are all kind of destroyed, you get some really great texture with these brushes. Don't throw away like these kind of brushes because these are the ones that are gonna give you some great texture. I, I hang on to these brushes just because they look like they're chewed up and just like mangled and they're all stained. Sometimes you get the best effects with these kind of brushes. So hang on to them, don't throw them away. Okay, because I'm getting some pretty cool effects. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but in real life, this looks pretty cool. Grab some more paint. They're not real precise, but they give cool texture. Oh, here comes the rain. There it is. I knew it was going to rain. Okay, so now that we got our extra coat on here, I think we are good to go with this guy. I wanna just give it one last bit right there. Okay. He looks good. So if you see any spots that look like they need it, just give it a little bit more. 
feel like I keep taking the paint back off on that one spot. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna let him dry some more. And we are going to do the broom now. And normally this does not take me this long. I just, I'm gabbing. It's, I usually am done with this in half the time. Okay, so I'm going to do this like a dark brown. And then I'm going to do this, oh, let's see, light, like different shades of light browns. And throw some dark brown in there. Excuse me, with some different like dark browns mixed in. And then maybe oh, a nice light brown for that one. So let's take a look. I like, um, I want to say a cocoa brown. Yes, I'm going to pick. Let's say a nice brown. I have so many paints. So many paints. So I think this one would be really good for the, this is like a nice tan color. Um, this one is burlap. So this would be great for this area here. So I'm gonna hang on to this, set this over here. And I also have this color and it's called pine cone. So I think those two colors kind of blended together for the, um, the bristles. And I don't know if I'll be able to um, make that exact um, effect that I did last year on the bristles, but I will definitely try. I feel like it was just kind of winging it. So I wish I had done a video when I did it. And then this is the coffee bean that I'm going to do for the, the base. And I'm going to dry brush it too. So it kind of makes those little knots stick out. Okay. So this is my coffee bean. I'm just going to set this over here. I did get some paint on myself. I'm just going to wipe that off. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to... I have a lot of brushes here. So I'm going to just move this over here. And I have a fresh brush. I'm just going to make sure I don't have too much paint on here. Here we are. This is coffee bean. And we're just going to go through here and paint the handle. Okay, get all the way down to the bottom. Okay, and we'll come back and we'll add some more paint to that in a little bit, but I'm gonna let that dry. I'll set it over here. And now we're ready for this part. All right, wish me luck. I haven't done this in a bit. So I'm going to start with our burlap. It sounds kind of, I don't know, let me shake this up really good. Okay. And really any tan paint will do. You don't have to use what I'm using. I mean, I would say any tan paint. So I don't want you to have to go out and buy the same exact stuff that I'm using. All right, I am gonna grab a fresh brush. Okay, I grabbed a few extra brushes. I've got so many. I'm actually gonna chuck this one. This one's going right in the garbage. There we go. 
I'm gonna just go ahead and grab some of this burlap. It's almost the same color as the MDF. There we have that. Just give it like a base. This is how I did it last year. Got some goobers in my paint. Okay. I want to make sure I get the whole thing. Get those edges. Oops. Like I said I'm getting goobers. I really, these little bits that are like leftover pieces from when I take it out of the laser that fall out afterwards and they land on my paper towel after I start. Okay. There we are. So let that dry for a second. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of mix some white with this burlap color for this part here. So it's almost the same color, but just like a highlighted version of that. I just mix a little bit of white in there. That's for that little band that holds the room together. I'm gonna set that over here. We are gonna um, use the art crayon on that. So I also have my, I have my pine cone paint, and then we're gonna use that. Okay, so since I still have that white paint on here, that's like the white and the burlap, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start like streaking it on here. I'm just streaking it. So I'm just kind of like streaking it as if it's um, like bristles. Just kind of so making those highlights of the bristles like that. Add some at the top. So we got that. So we got some there. And I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna use the same brush. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this pine cone. And I don't wanna have too much paint on there. I'm just gonna do the same thing again and just go through here and just lightly, just gently add those in. So just add a little bit more. I'm just gonna add those in just ever so slightly, just here and there. It doesn't have to be perfect, just in between where you put the white. There we go. So that's all you're gonna do for that. That's all I'm doing for this one. I'm gonna take this away now. Now, I still have that dark brown that we used on the, um, like that coffee bean, and I'm gonna take some of that off. Now we're gonna start adding some of the, the darker shades. So I'm just gonna go through very, very lightly because you don't want those to take over. I'm just gonna go through and just add those in too that dark brown in there again. And I put a little bit in. And it's almost because the bristles are kind of all separated. So I'm getting a little bit too much, but it's okay. And I'm just gonna go through. And if you put too much in, 
you can always go back and add more of the white. See, and we're just gonna add more of that. Doesn't have to be perfect. So we're just going through and we're just grazing it all in there. And I kind of like the way that looks, the top. So there's our, there's our, um, our broom. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the dark towards the edges, towards the bottom. And there's our broom. And this is the little piece that holds it together. So I'm actually gonna go through, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the, what do you call this color, the burlap, and just kinda blend it through a little bit more. If you start to blend it too, too much, if you put too much, then it starts to look muddy. You don't want that. You want those colors to really shine through really nice. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through here and I have that black on my, or that brown on here. I'm gonna take that coffee brown and I'm gonna just dry brush. So make sure you get all that extra paint off there. And I'm just gonna dry brush along the edges just to give it like some like, I don't know, some texture Make it look like it's a real broom. There we are. And I'm just going through and I'm just rubbing the bristles along the edges. Just kind of dragging it. Make it look a little dirty even. Like, whose broom is clean? Not mine. All right. My broom doesn't even look like that. I don't have a broom like that. <laughs> All right. I have a Swiffer. Okay, so we're gonna put that on there. There it is. Okay, you know what I really wanna do? I really like this, I really like that style. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a little bit of that effect to the edge. Just add that right to the edge. Maybe put a little bit on the inside of that broom. Really like that. Like maybe it's all dirty. Maybe you were sweeping something filthy. I don't know. You're, maybe the floors were, maybe this ghost was sweeping a really old, dirty, yucky house. It's really dirty floor. So the room's all dirty at the bottom. There we go. And give it some really cool dry brushing at the bottom. And I'm just using that, that brown, that coffee bean. Just put it along the edge. go. That's going to really make it pop. I don't know if I nailed it like I did last year, but I, I think I got it pretty close to how I painted the broom last year. But I you know people asked me last year how I painted it, and I really wanted to get a video of, of how I painted the brush the broom last year. So Hopefully I, I helped you guys out with that. Okay, so here we are. And we're gonna put that back on. So there's our bottom part of our broom. And I'm gonna come back and I do have our broom stick over here, our handle. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna just take some of this burlap and I'm gonna dry brush some of this just along the edges a little bit just to give it some texture just along the edges there we are and just kind of make it look like it's real wood there we go those edges. Okay, so there's our broomstick. There it is. It's gonna look like that. Okay, I think we have pretty much everything painted. 
I want to just go back and get our ghost now. Here he is. He looks pretty good. He's pretty much dry. What I want to do is I want to get my art crayon again. Here's our art crayon. And let me take the cap off. And I can also use a brush. So maybe I will start with the art crayon. I'm going to just go around his eye area because I definitely got some paint in his eyes, but that's okay. I'm going to just go around. I'm going to outline those eyes with the art crayon. And if you look at the ghost I did last year, like I just, I went really crazy with the art crayon. I mean, it did not have to be perfect. I mean, he was really, he was, he was old and dirty. He like, he had, he was all filthy. He was not a very like clean looking ghost. So if yours has black all over the edges and stuff, I mean, it's okay. Totally fine. I just want to make sure I get in there. I get all those crevices. Okay. Does not have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna put my my fingers all in there and I'm just gonna kinda blend that out. It does not have to be perfect because we're gonna dry brush him anyways. So here's his eyes. Make sure I get all inside there. Get all that white paint that I got all in there. Okay. So if you've got white paint in there, no big deal. You can even use black paint for this part. I can use the dry brushing technique like we've been doing. So I'm just gonna kind of blend. And this is my favorite part is the, it's like kind of scuffing him up. Cause I don't want him to look like he's brand new. He's a ghost. He's not supposed to look brand new. And this is where um, the texture in the paint is gonna help you out because you're gonna see all that texture come out and you can take your fingers and kind of start really rubbing it along that texture and you're gonna see all that texture showing. Look at that, that looks so fun. So look at all that texture. We're gonna start really filling that whole thing in. What I wanna do is I think I wanna, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do the chalk paint or the art crayon for the whole thing. I was gonna dry brush it, but I might just do the art crayon for the whole thing. So I'm gonna just kind of put that all along the edges. I might go back with the brush too. So you're just gonna kind of add that to the edge. And I'm gonna put it all in here, inside here. And it's okay if it gets on the front. It's totally fine because that's what you want. It doesn't have to just be on the edge. You wanna get it on the front. That's where you're, that's what you want right here. See, it's totally fine. Cause we're going to try to blend all this out. So I'm going to take my finger and you see it's all blending. See how cool that looks. You don't have to use your finger either. I just, I like to use my fingers just cause I have more control over what I'm doing with my fingers. So, and you know what, this is where you're going to start adding. You can add some cool like lines in his, in his little, ghost, like, I don't know what you call it, not ghost outfit, but I don't know, whatever you want to call this, if it's a sheet, I'm not sure, but this is where you're going to add all like the texture, and, like see like wrinkles, and you're going to add all that texture in here, look at that, and you're going to start rubbing, and you're gonna see the texture in the paint showing through. There we go. And you can see that spot that I messed up over here. Like the paint just didn't wanna dry right here. So I'm gonna go back and fix that. I'm gonna fix that with my paint. Cause I don't know what happened there. It just didn't wanna like dry right there. So I'm gonna fix it. It's really bizarre. But that's why you can always go back, fix it with some paint. It doesn't have to be have to be perfect. So if you don't like some spots, go back and fix it with paint. No big deal. Nothing is permanent. So if you don't like something, go back and paint over it. Like, hmm, maybe I don't like this over here. I'll go back and fix it. Take some paint off. 
There we go. Cool. Maybe I don't like this over here. Take some of it off. Of course, I got paint in his eye. Silly me. But you know what? I could add more. Um, what do you call it? Chalk. Or the art crayon. So there's our little guy. Pretty happy with it. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot this part of his, his little his little hand. And I'm gonna just kind of rub over here where he's holding his broom. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just gonna fix that eye where I got some of that paint. All right, and I'm pretty happy with, with this guy. He's pretty fun. Okay, so I think I'm, I think that's good. I think I'm gonna leave him with that. He's got some nice texture. I'm gonna set him back over here. And now I'm going to start um, assembling and see how I like everything. Oh, you know what I wanna do? I also wanna do, I'm gonna do the dry brushing on the hat. That's what I wanna do. So I still have my black paint out and I'm going to, I'm just gonna dip this in the black paint a little bit. I don't wanna take too much, take take some of that paint off first so that it's kind of dry. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna just kinda dry brush those edges. Cause I just want this to look slightly purple, not totally purple, but just slightly purple. So I'm just gonna go through here and just kinda rub this along the edges. There we are. And it also creates some kind of like wrinkles in the hat, some shadows. There we are. There we go. There, I think that's pretty good. So now we have some nice kind of like dimension in the hat. Okay, now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna set this back over here. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a little bit of the dry brushing too on the, on the leaves, just for spookiness. I have that black still on my brush. Just adding a little bit, just so it's not like so brand new looking. I don't like my stuff to look brand new, like when it's Halloween. I don't want it to be like perfect. Give it a little bit of shadows. There we go. And I did want to say, I did want to come back and fix this and do like maybe some of that red that we talked about. And let me see if I have that brush. I think I already used it. I think this was the red one. Yep. I'm going to take some of that paint off. I don't want too much red. Just gonna take a little bit of the red and just put it along the edges. That looks cool. I'm just taking a little, little bit. I put it in between there. And this one here. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. And then we have the ones we did before. There we go. And there's our hat. All right, so let me come back with my ghost. I have to move this. I don't wanna get my ghost right in that paint. I'm just gonna put this back. And I do have that other part of the ghost. That's the first piece we had. We did his eyes, the black for his eyes. And we're gonna put this piece over it. So there he is, there's his eyes. Here's his hat. There we go. Make sure we line it all up. Make sure it's all lined up. There he is there. Oh, I love it. So, and then 
I'm gonna try to set this down. I don't wanna put this in the paint. I'm gonna move this. There we go. Put this back down. Here's our broom. Here's the broom. Here's our broom stick. Make sure we line that up. And then we have our little bat and that goes right on top. So that is everything. He is finished. We just have to glue him down and I like to use Loctite super glue for that. This you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, Michaels, wherever you buy glue, even Walmart has it. So um, the only issue with this, it dries pretty much instantly. So the second you set something down, it is dry. Like you don't have much time to work. So make sure you have your stuff lined up perfectly before you um, actually set it down because you only have like a matter of like two or three seconds and it's it's set. So that's the only issue with that. Um, or you could even use like 3M tape or whatnot. So here is our final um, little guy. And I think I'm pretty happy with how he came out. He's pretty cute. So that's all there is to making him. And um, easy peasy. And I think pretty much anybody um, can follow these simple steps um, to do dry brushing. Um, I didn't end up using the um, distressing inks, but these are really simple. It's the same style. You can use these um, same way you do with the art crayons. Um, you just rub it along the edges and then rub it out with your fingers. So it's exactly the same. So I am really happy with how this turned out and I hope that you guys like him and um, hopefully the tutorial will help you um, with your crafts this year. And um, even if you don't buy this file, hopefully the um, techniques will help you with any other files that you're working on or other crafts. And um, thanks for joining me tonight. All right. Have a great evening. Bye.